So, um, gene therapy is something that may not be uh, familiar, may well be familiar to all of you, but my next guest is going to explain exactly what gene therapy is and why it is really, truly a game changer. He is from Boston and um, he's joining me now, I hope, on the stage. There he is. <laughs> it's quite a long walk. Sam Kulkarni, the CEO of CRISPR. It's great to meet you. Please come to take a seat. So um, you're going to answer me that first question. What do you mean by gene therapy? It's not, um, it's pretty well defined, isn't it? Tell us what it is. Uh, thank you, Tanya, for having us here. Um, I'm the CEO of CRISPR Therapeutics, and our mission is to transform medicine using a technology called CRISPR that's used for gene editing. What is gene editing? And this has been a topic that's captured the imagination of forums like from the Vatican all the way to the White House. This is a technology that could fundamentally change how we think about medicine and treating disease. What we have is a technology that has a pair of molecular scissors that are nanoscale scissors that we can send into the human body to fundamentally change our genes rather than give pills as a medicine. So as a one-time treatment, you can send these scissors in, conduct surgery in your body at a molecular level, and treat a disease and cure it for life. So I'm going to use cystic fibrosis as an example. This is something we probably talk about in the UK more than in other countries. There's a reason for that, and I hope you're going to explain it, um, and how gene therapy can help. It's a genetic disease, quite simply. Yeah, cystic fibrosis is a relatively prevalent disease for being a genetic disease. And all it is is a set of mutations in your CFTR gene that allows for transportation of, of fluids across the lung. And there are a number of people who suffer from this disease in the, in, in the, in the Western world, around the world, actually. Uh, and the reason for it is, early on, there was some this notion that if you had cystic fibrosis, you were protected against the plague. And so as you had as episodes of plague uh, take out large villages and large um, pieces of humanity, you know, people who had cystic fibrosis survived, and that led to a greater prevalence of this disease. Now, how can you treat this disease? It's very difficult to treat with medicines, and obviously a company, Vertex Therapeutics of Pharmaceuticals, has come up with medicines to treat cystic fibrosis, but what you could do with gene editing is fundamentally go in and change the, the mutation that actually caused the disease. So you go into the lungs, go to the basal epithelial layer, and change the mutation that actually fundamentally caused the disease. This can be a cure for life and has tremendous potential, not only for cystic fibrosis, but thousands of diseases that we would treat in a very different way in the future. So how close are you to be able to use this widely on patients? The technology cycle has been quite rapid. Just to contextualize historically, uh, about 100 years ago, we realized that we have genetic material in our body. That's the code of life. And we set out efforts to read the gene. It took us about 80 years or so to understand and fully read the genome. And now we're in a new era, which we're writing the genome. We can fundamentally rewrite our code of life. And the, the way we do it is with this technology, CRISPR. But uh, the technology cycle has been really rapid. The CRISPR technology was elucidated about seven years ago. And since then, we've made rapid strides in bringing this platform technology, make a medicine from it, and put it into clinical trials. In fact, uh, we've now started clinical trials in three different diseases, one in sickle cell disease, one in thalassemia, which is another anemia disease or blood-related disease, and a number of cancers. Um, and we've done all this, you know. I'm going to stop you there. You've mentioned the word cancer. At the point at which somebody mentions cancer, everybody becomes really interested. Why is this effective in treatment against cancer? Uh, we've now gone to a point where cancer has become the number one killer uh, as we've all lived longer and life expectancy has gone higher. Mm. And in fact, and you it's know, diagnosed more often. It's diagnosed more often. And uh, there are also environmental factors that are causing more cancer as well, is the belief. Um, so with cancers, we all are prone to cancers. Our cells, when they replicate, have defects that happen in the genome that could potentially cause cancer. 
but we have repair mechanisms and we have our immune system that surveils our body. And if there's a cell that could cause a cancer, that's quickly uh, killed and, and eliminated. Now, as we grow older and as our immune system weakens, we don't have that surveillance system anymore that leads to more cancer formation. What we're doing is essentially taking a young person's cells, immune cells, a 25, 30 year old who is at the peak of their health, we take their immune cells, use CRISPR to reprogram these cells to kill the cancer and introduce that into the patient. So the drug you're getting is a set of live cells that you're injecting into a patient they go into the body, find the cancer, whether it's in the bone marrow, whether it's in the liver, they find the cancer, kill the cancer cells, and that's the way to cure cancer. Okay, let's talk about money because that's in a way what underpins our conversations in the forum. Does this mean that we will rely less on oral drugs or indeed injected drugs in the future? Because what you're talking about is more of a medical procedure. I don't know if it comes under that heading. And also, is your world, which is what biotechnology, really, bioengineering, is that attracting a lot of funding right now? Uh, yes. You know, I think that the nature of medicine is going to completely change. You know, it's going to feel more like surgery. You know, you go in today for a hip surgery or some sort of surgery, uh, it's going to feel that way. You're going to have your cells manipulated and edited, and you're going to go into the hospital, get a procedure, stay in the hospital for a week or so, you come out and that could be the cure for life, right? So you don't have this paradigm of taking pills every week or every day. Uh, and and that's, that's going to be the way medicine's going to evolve. Now, pharmaceuticals is a trillion dollar market and mm -hmm. growing. And as we bring these curative therapies there, the business model is going to completely change. You're not going to have a mode of paying for chronic pills that you're taking over time. Instead, you're going to pay for one-off procedures that could be a cure for life. And in fact, we're doing this globally. One of the reasons uh, also I'm here in Riyadh is the, the, well, we're conducting trials around the world, but in Saudi, there's about 35,000 patients that suffer from sickle cell disease. And the King Faisal Hospital here in Riyadh actually does transplants for some of these patients. So globally, we're going to change that the paradigm. that again is a genetic disorder. It's a genetic disorder. Sickle cell disease is a disease that's so prevalent because it protected against malaria. So in Africa and other parts of Asia, as you had malaria bouts, people would die, and people who had sickle trait were protected against this disease. But all of a sudden, if you have two copies of that mutation, you're suffering from a very terrible disease that has no medicines available. So when we, we're bringing this CRISPR technology to trials in various parts of the world, where it's a one-off transplant procedure that then becomes a cure for life. And that would take away all the pain, that would take away all the suffer, you know, the acute chest syndrome and everything else that are causes of morbidity in these patients at a very early age. So 20 seconds just to say how transformative this type of therapy you think could be to the entire health system. And I come from a country, you know, we have a national health service, which is very, very overburdened indeed. Is it going to help with government's funding um, health of the citizens? This is... It, this is probably once in a generation technology that we see every 30 or 40 years that could completely transform the health system and in fact has the potential to transform humanity. Over the last year I've been invited as a speaker in various forums from the Vatican to the White House and the reason for that is leaders around the world have recognized the potential for something like CRISPR to change the landscape entirely. And for us, we're, we're now early on embarking on this journey where we're at the forefront and the preeminent company trying to pave the way in how we change the world with this technology. Sam, thank you very much indeed, and thank you for listening. Thank you. It's a pleasure.